This is the plaintiff, Angela Burns. She says she buys and flips houses, and she gave the defendant a chicken coop and equipment from a property she recently purchased. The woman removed all the equipment from the coop, all right, but she left the structure intact, and she's here suing her for the $1,275 she's now going to have to pay someone else to remove the chicken coop. This is the defendant, Maggie. She says she's doing everything she can to remove the chicken coop. But the plaintiff is as impatient as they come, and sometimes these things take time. She has to level the land to get a truck in there. She has to get a permit to remove the coop. And she has to wait for the mud to dry up from the two bad hurricanes that came through. She's accused of playing chicken. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leal is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Ms. Burns, tell me about your chicken coop. I flip houses and I purchased a house with a chicken coop and chickens. Uh, I didn't want to take care of the chickens because I know nothing about them. So I found someone on the day of the closing that came and picked the chickens up. And I got left with this enormous coop. Okay, let's see um, if we've got a picture of that. Is this the coop we're talking about? That is the coop. Okay, and what else uh, used to be in there? Because there was some, also some electronic equipment or some of some kind, some automatic feeders. Tell me about that. I don't know what other equipment was in there, but there were just some pieces of equipment that helped to take care of chickens. Okay, so what um, happens? You advertise, how do you advertise? Hey, anybody want a chicken coop? Like, how, do, how does that advertisement go? I put it on Facebook for free. Right. Just take and this I, off my property. Right. I just wanted to get rid of it. Okay. But when um, you put it on Facebook for free, did it include taking this shed and the coop and everything with it, not just the electronics, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. And correct. so you get a response from the defendant. And let me hear from you, Ms. Maggie. Tell me about your chicken connection. I actually raise chickens. And um, I sometimes rent them out. And you rent a chicken? I, I rent chicken. I do chicken rentals. Chicken for people that you got to tell me what a chicken rental is. So people that think they might like to have fresh eggs and maybe even some lawn care from chickens on their property, they can get a little coop, two to four birds for a few months, and they can do a trial run with like no commitment. To having chickens on their property. What's the commitment that, that one does that they would like? In other words, how big a commitment? I'm like, new I mean, to I this. I got a few business. ways in mind that you could get rid of the chicken, but I'm just I'm gonna <laughs> let that lie. Go ahead. Well, usually you start by getting chicks, yeah, and you raise them until adulthood. All right. So, how long have you been in this business? Uh, very. I, I I just did a trial run this summer. How did it I'm go? I'm very new to it. Uh, not so bad. Good. Uh, Good. All yeah. right. So now you see her ad, Ms. Burns' ad, and you respond to it. You go over there. And what part did you get done? You went over there and took what? I took a look at the place and I decided that it would be something that I could use because I get hens back. So I wanted to have a nice winter coop for these birds that are coming back. And it had a little attached run so, so they could get out of the coop and get more fresh air and exercise. Right. So what did you get off her property? So I took that, uh, that door. I removed that door because it was covered with, you know, bird poop and some rodent feces and, you know, uh, to clean it up. And then there was also um, a feeder that was all mildewed. Uh, took that and, and cleaned that up. I also started removing some of the screws from that run. So the run has to be removed first before the coop could be moved. And I came a few days and, you know, was working on the screws and it would be rainy. Um, and then I heard this Hurricane Henri was coming. So I'm like, oh no, you know, so the hurricane Weren't would damage the coop. supposed to just take the whole thing? Yes. Yes, right. but it has to be taken apart slowly in pieces. Why? Why can't it be because taken apart not slowly? I mean, it takes definitely in pieces, 
but why in all of these months you still haven't taken it? She flips houses for a living. The reason to give you all of this is for you to take it off so she doesn't have to pay somebody to take it off. And her complaint now is that you have put her in the position where she needs to pay somebody to take it because it's been three months and in 90 days you still haven't taken it. You've taken the good stuff. Uh, but you've I've left her with the stuff. stuff that nobody wants to take off for free. Well, I have to move the shed someplace. Well, and the a, place that sounds like a you problem. That doesn't sound like a Ms. Burns problem. That is problem. a me problem. Right. So what's uh, going yeah. on on your property that makes it hard for you to move it there? So these hurricanes came and various rains and it just keeps raining and the ground is just very, very, very soggy. So I, to put the shed on the foundation that's already there, a machine would have to like bring it across this section that has suddenly become extremely muddy. So I'm like, all right, she's impatient. She wants it done. Impatient. All right, Three I'll, months she's waited. Yeah. Wait, did so you ever I got have some, an agreement with her how long it would take you to remove it? No. When I Nobody first met her, we Nobody ever said it'll have, take me a week, it'll take me two days. Nothing was ever said about when you'd take it? There was no timeline. And Ms. Burns, according to you, what was the timeline? She told me she would have it gone by the next Friday. Did you tell her you would have it gone by the next Friday after you took the other stuff? Uh, before, I, before I took the other stuff, um, I contacted a, a few landscapers that might have a trailer that could fit the shed and had experience moving sheds. Uh, I finally got a hold of somebody that would do it, and he said, all right, we can get it done Friday. So you and did then, tell them. All right. Now, you actually had a truck that got stuck in the mud there. What kind of truck was that? So I was going to have some fill put in on my property to fill up the wet spot so that his trailer and truck could drive across. Um, the dump truck full of fill got stuck. So they brought another dump truck to pull that dump truck out. Oh, that got stuck. <laughs> so they brought an excavator in to unload the trucks so they wouldn't be so heavy so they could get them out. And then they brought a bulldozer to smooth out the big piles of stuff that they had dumped. All these trucks are getting stuck. The excavator, they had to like tie a chain to a tree and winch it out of the mud. You can't have the shed and the, and the screen, but you agreed to take it so you could take it and dump it. You could do that instead of her. Why didn't you ever do that? You're giving me the reasons why you can't have it on your property, but you're not telling me why you don't just get it off of hers, which is her agitation? Uh, yes. As soon as I can get a hold of the landscaper again, we can work out a time when he can move it. But I was kind of hoping that she'd give me a little bit more time so that it could be How much more time than 90 days? Well, until it dries up. And I was thinking that after the hurricane, it would dry up in like two weeks. And it just keeps raining and raining and thunderstorms and more rain. And this is usually the dry time of year. So... Um, it gets, it's getting to the point that I know, if she it gave freezes you, up, it's getting to the point where she's given you 12 times the amount of time you said you needed. Yeah. But weather happened. Yeah. Uh, except for Ms. Maggie at some point, I got to call it. And I think we've reached that point. It's not as though uh -huh. Ms. Burns is filing this lawsuit the week after she's filing this lawsuit three months later. And I'm not comfortable telling her she needs to sit around and wait longer. Let me see the estimate for removing this. Why is it so high? One thousand two hundred and something dollars. Uh, it was higher than I thought, but they have to disassemble it, get a dumpster, bring the dumpster in. Yeah, but why? Why don't they just whack it and get and put it in a dumpster? Why do they have to disassemble it carefully? Nobody's reusing it. So, well, not carefully, no, but just right. to cut it all apart in pieces. Dumpsters yeah. are not cheap. No. Dumpsters are very expensive. Right. But and I, I think the dumpster alone is 600 some odd dollars. Okay. I find in favor of the plaintiff based on what I've heard in the amount of the $1,275. And I understand your frustration, Ms. Maggie, that, you know, uh, wait, this is free junk. Um, but the agreement was you take it all. She was more than patient waiting three months, which is 12 times longer than the amount of time that you said you'd take, and we've reached the end of the road. And now if it's gonna cost her that, how is that fair to her? $1,275 verdict for the plaintiff. So look, I mean, the plaintiff won because three months was an unreasonable amount of time for the defendant to remove the coop. But if you really, really, really want to make sure 
that somebody is complying with the contract in a timely fashion, write the magic words in the deal. Time is of the essence. If your children decided halfway through law school that being a lawyer wasn't for them, would you make them finish anyway or let them pick a different major? We have a daughter who's in her third year of law school, so and one who's applying, so this kind of hits pretty close to home. Uh, I would say law school is such a grind and it's expensive that I would probably let them bail at a year and a half rather than kill another 18 months of their life just to get uh, to frame a little thing on the wall that says, I'm a lawyer. If they really don't want to do it, if it's something that's just not for them, what do you think? Well, you'd now smack them in the head. I say, would hit them in the back of the head and <laughs> say, "Suck it up for eighteen months." You're mid midway through it. Right. The law is a profession. I would never want them to practice law if they didn't want to. Right. But the law is a profession. A legal degree is something that helps you in a million other businesses. This is our relationship in a nutshell. Yes, it is. I'm the good cop. You're the bad guy. Right. Your right? parenting theory is I'm a coming girl, and my <laughs> parenting theory is right. Are you kidding me? We're right. halfway right. into this. Right. Let's let's just finish up. Y you could be an FBI right. agent. You could you, you could be. There's so of, many. Uh, different things you could yes. do. You could open a business. Right. And, and then you always have your knowledge of the law. Right. To, so there's just right. so many, you so know, many advantages yeah. to finishing that yes. I would want them to finish. I agree.